We've got some roster retooling to do for the New York Giants, starting with the quarterback group. Draft, free agency, both, and who? Find out next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Traina, P. Train credentialed member of the New York Giants media for Locked On, as well as for Giants Country over on the Fan Nation Network. And I want to send a special greeting and shout out to my everydayers, my Blue Crew community members, my newcomers, and everybody in between checking out the podcast, whether you're a first-timer, a long-timer, a periodical listener, Whatever you are, you are all appreciated and loved by yours truly. So thank you for making us your first listen of the day, or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of today. And on today's Locked on Giants podcast, we're going to kick off our unit-by-unit look at where the Giants need to get better. And we're going to start with quarterback, obviously. You know, I think we can all agree that the Giants need some roster retooling at quarterback. So I'm going to take a look at basically how we got to this situation. Because, you know, a lot of people will say, well, Daniel Jones is how we got to this situation. But it actually goes back a little further than that. So we'll take a a brief recap of that. Then we'll look at free agent options. We'll look at draft options and then how this thing will probably play out. And I'm going to give you some names of players that I think might be in consideration to help boost the Giants' uh, position at quarterback. So that is our agenda again. Welcome on in. And we're going to kick things off, like I said, with a little recap. Now, I know a lot of you know the story here, but just bear with me here because there's some elements that I think we need to talk about um, as to how we got into this mess that the Giants are in at quarterback. All right. As I see it, the whole thing kind of went off the rails going back to 2018. Now, if you remember that year, um, Eli Manning at that point had, I believe, two years left on his, on his contract, 2018 and 2019. And the Giants that year had the number two pick in the draft, the, the second, you know, the number two overall pick. And instead of taking a quarterback, Josh Allen, of course, was on the board. He went to uh, Buffalo at number seven. Everybody and their uncle knew that the Giants were going to take Saquon Barkley. Okay, so that was the Giants' first mistake. And I'm not blaming Saquon for that, by the way, because obviously Saquon doesn't have a say as to where he gets drafted, as does any player. I'm blaming Dave Gettleman for that because the intention back then was to try and bleed as much out of Eli Manning's career as possible. So they figured, okay, you know what? Eli had just come off of two seasons, two straight seasons, where he had attempted 600 or more passes, Let's get him a running game, take some of the onus off of his arm, so this way we can bleed out what's left in his career. All right, now, in principle and theory, it wasn't a bad idea, except the Giants' offensive line, as we all know, not very good. So in retrospect, the Giants would have been better off, obviously, trading down, getting you know some additional draft picks that maybe they could have used for offensive linemen, or if they were going to take a quarterback to replace the Eli and, you know, look, they put that decision off. If you think about it, they put that decision off as long as they possibly could. They should have gone with Josh Allen. Now, you know, some of you are going to say hindsight is twenty twenty, but this is important to understand because this is how the giants got into this mess that they're in right now. So anyway, 2019 rolls around and the giants are kind of banking on Justin Herbert coming out of school declaring for the draft early. That was the guy, and nobody's going to convince me otherwise, but that was the guy that I believe the Giants were hoping they would be able to get. That was the guy I believe the Giants 
were willing to maybe move up if they had to, to get Justin Herbert. As we all know, Justin Herbert decided to stay in school. And what did the Giants do? Well, again, Eli Manning was in the final year of his deal. The Giants did not have a guy, you know, on the roster. I mean, they had tried with Davis Webb and, you know, that didn't work out. Um, they tried with Kyle Lawletta. That didn't work out. So what do they do? They go and they draft Daniel Jones with the sixth overall pick in the 2019 draft. Now, interestingly, I had Jones as a mid to late first round pick. I did not have him as a 10, top 10 pick. I thought perhaps the Giants would, would take him. Um, they had That year, they had the 6th and 17th overall picks in, in the draft. The 17th overall pick coming from the Odell Beckham Jr. trade with Cleveland. So I thought perhaps they would go quarterback at number 17 instead of 6. And of course, that wasn't how it worked out. <clears throat> so the Giants took Daniel Jones. And then to make matters worse, instead of letting him sit for a year behind Eli Manning, who was in the final year of his contract, Pat Shermer, then the head coach, goes and rushes him into the offense. And Jones, you know, had flashes, but in retrospect, he wasn't ready. But that didn't stop Pat Shermer, who wanted to unlock a whole new part of his playbook, which involved quarterback mobility, something that Eli Manning didn't have. That didn't stop Shermer from, from you know, making the switch. So anyway, Daniel Jones now takes over for the Giants at quarterback. And now we get to the new regime, the Joe Shane, Brian Dable regime. And this is what I think a lot of people miss when they say, why did the Giants sign Daniel Jones to the contract? They did. If you remember, Daniel Jones was coming off, you know, uh, of a uh, shaky, another shaky season with injuries. Brian Dable and Joe Shane both were of the opinion that, okay, let's see how he does. Let's not pick up the fifth-year option. Let's see how he does so this way we don't lock ourselves in to a quarterback that maybe isn't going to be a fit for us. So they do. They let they see how he works out in 2023. Um, he goes on, and he has – I'm sorry, 2022. My bad. So he goes on in 2022, has a great year, leads the team to a 9-7-1 and record and a playoff berth. And then lo and behold, now the Giants are backed into a corner. They're drafting way too low. Even if they thought of taking another quarterback, they were drafting, I think, 25th last year. And they have to now sign Daniel Jones to a contract. But here was the telling thing that I think a lot of people don't take into consideration with Daniel Jones. The simple fact that Joe Shane, when he constructed that contract, put in an escape hatch to get out at it halfway through after two years if that doesn't tell you that the Giants were still not 110% convinced that Daniel Jones was their guy moving forward, then I don't know what to tell you, folks. But that, to me, screamed that they were not convinced. So they gave Daniel Jones, in essence, what is a two-year contract. He did well, um, you know, He actually uh, leading up to it in his contract year, he did well the first year of his contract, which was 2023, struggled. And, of course, the injury issue came back. The neck, his second neck injury in three years, and of course the ACL affecting his legs, which were a big part of his game. So now here we are. We are now in 2024. The new league year starts on, starts on March 13th. The Giants need to address the quarterback situation. Daniel Jones is still rehabbing. Tyrod Taylor is going to be an unrestricted free agent. I'm not so sure he comes back. Tommy DeVito, who was rushed into the lineup last year because of the injury situation, probably could use a little bit more seasoning. Um, Joe Shane telling reporters at the end of last year that if Daniel isn't ready, that they want to get a guy in here who can start if need be and win some games, which if you read between the lines, doesn't mean it's DeVito. All right. Shane also saying that the expectation which is the key word here. The expectation is that Daniel Jones will be the starter once he is healthy. That means things can change. All right. So that's kind of a recap of where we are with the quarterback situation. Why this team is in a mess right now, because they just kept running it back with Daniel Jones, you know, and they, you know, to be fair, they, they wanted to see what they had in him, but here we are 
The guy's had, what, five years now of his career, and we're still wondering what he is as a quarterback. Can he ever, you know, can they win with him? You know, was 2023, um, I'm sorry, 2022, was that a fluke? You know, too many questions. And at what point do you say to yourself, okay, there's still questions after five years. We still don't know if we can win with him. We, you know, we're in a good position. We're drafting sixth overall in, in this year's draft. It's time to move on. So I think they have reached that point, which is why, spoiler alert, I think the Giants are going to address the quarterback situation in both free agency and in the draft. So coming up next, I'm going to talk about the free agent options, what the Giants need, and what a contract might look like for a free agent. Uh, free agent quarterback acquisition right after this. Hey, Giant fans, if you're having trouble finding those last minute tickets to your favorite concerts, shows, and sporting events, Game Time has you covered. They offer a wide selection of seats complete with seat views to help you decide where to sit. And they're constantly offering last minute tickets through flash deals. There are no hidden fees. You'll know exactly what your deal is before you check out. And Game Time even has tickets available as late as an hour after an event starts, making it truly the best place to find last-minute deals at amazing prices. And if you want more reasons to trust Game Time, well, they offer event cancellation protection. And if you find tickets in the same section and row for less elsewhere, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app create an account, and use the promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. That app, again, is Game Time, and that promo code is Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. And coming up this week on the Locked on Giants podcast, we're going to do each position group. Um, we're going to go through the same exercise uh, for each position group. But I'm going to also interrupt the series at one point because I'm scheduled to have O.C. Manura on the program. And O.C. is going to come on. We're going to talk Giants, obviously. And we're also going to talk about the International Pathway Program. Um, O.C., of course, did a commercial recently uh, that aired during the Super Bowl so we're going to give him an opportunity to talk to talk a little bit about that program because it's kind of an under the radar type of program um, that, you know, they want to get some information out about. So we'll give OC that opportunity. And plus, it's always good to catch up with OC. As you know, I've covered him when he was a member of the Giants. So he's always been one of my guys and I'm looking forward to that. So hope you will join us. All right, let's get back to the quarterback situation here. And the Giants are going to add a free agent. That much I can tell you. The question is who? Now, Joe Shane did not rule out bringing back Tyrod Taylor, but I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I would be very surprised if Tyrod Taylor returns to the Giants. I mean, there would have to be absolutely no market for him, for him to come back. And the reason why I say that, and this is just my shooting spitballs, if you will, um, I question if Tyrod Taylor didn't get a little irked over the fact that when he came off of IR, that he wasn't given his starting job back. You know, at the time, if you remember, DeVito was winning. Um, he was, we were in the height of, of DeVito mania, Tommy Cutlet mania. And Tyrod Taylor, when he came off of IR, didn't get his starting job back for, for a while. Now, Taylor did not make a stink about it. He was, you know, the ultimate professional. But in doing so, because he had some incentives that were built in to him, you know, starting, you wonder how much money he lost in the process. So, you know, I'm not saying that that's going to necessarily mean that he's going on. He's he's going to tell the Giants to you know to get lost if they come back and ask him to resign with them. But you wonder if that doesn't factor into any kind of decision. You wonder if Tyrod Taylor says to himself, you know what, I want to go someplace where I can maybe compete to start. So that being said, who are some free agent options if it's not Tyrod Taylor? I have three for you. And disclaimer, I'm not really wild about 
the pending free agent class. Um, but got to pick some, I guess. So I, I've got three for you. Ryan Tannehill from the Titans, who, you know, his stats wouldn't indicate that he's very good, but he's actually a little bit better than his stats indicate. He's got an 82 and 73 uh, regular season one loss record as a starter. 10 years of experience. He shouldn't be that expensive to, to bring on board. And, you know, look, if you're looking for somebody to be a game manager until Daniel Jones is ready, that's your, that's as good of a candidate as any. All right. Another guy that I would be intrigued by is Gardner Minshew of the Colts. I think he'll probably cost a little bit more because he is coming off of a Pro Bowl season. Um, and I could see him maybe wanting to stay with Indianapolis because they're kind of in the same situation as the Giants and that their incumbent starting quarterback, Anthony Richardson, is coming off of a season-ending injury, and he may or may not be ready to go. So if you're Minshew and you know that you know there's a chance you might start next season, why would you want to go to another team to learn a new system? So I don't know that the Giants would necessarily get him, but – that's somebody I would still place a call to this, to gauge his interests. Minshew, by the way, has a 15 and 22 one loss record as a starting quarterback in regular season. Um, the last guy that I have is obviously Mitchell Trubisky. Now, for the same reason, spoiler alert, that I'm going to cite for the offensive line when we get to that that particular position group, this year coming up is a make or break year for Brian Dable and Joe Shane. I really believe that. They have got to start to show progress, especially Dable. So you're going to probably want to hit the ground running come week one of the season. To do that, doesn't it make sense to bring in veterans, and especially if veterans in question know the system that you're running? Well, Trubisky was with Dable in Buffalo in, I believe it was 2021. So if you can get him, and the Steelers have already, you know, apparently announced that they're going to release him. If you can get Trubisky on a, on a decent contract, he might make the most sense. Now, some of you I know have said, well, what about trading for Justin Fields? Because apparently there's a rumor that Justin Fields is going to, you know, the Bears are going to announce what their intentions are and their intentions are to move on from him. I don't know if that report is true or not. I'm not trading for Justin Fields. I'm sorry. Justin Fields at that point, you know, you might as well just get a, a young quarterback in here, which I think, by the way, they're going to do. So anyway, with a veteran quarterback, the contract is probably going to be set up similar to what Taylor's contract looked like, meaning that, you know, he was paid as a high-end backup, but there were playtime incentives and performance incentives that boosted his numbers up so that he wasn't like, you know, playing for pennies as a starting quarterback. So I think that's what you're going to see. And, you know, I, I'll get into a, a contract breakdowns, you know, as they come up. I'll break those down for you here on the show. But um, the backup quarterback is going to have a lot of incentives, especially knowing that, you know, Daniel Jones is coming off of an injury, has an injury history, especially, you know, if the Giants go and they they take a, a rookie quarterback. Uh, that backup quarterback will have an opportunity to make some serious coin um, if he, you know, on his contract. So that being said, what about the draft? You know, will the Giants take a quarterback in the draft? I think they will. Will it be a first rounder or day two pick? Well, I'll give you some names right after this. Hey, Giant fans, football season is officially over, but that doesn't mean the excitement of betting on sports has to end. Because right now you can get buckets when you place your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. So head on over to Fandle.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Fandle, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. My name is Patricia Trena, and we're talking quarterbacks. The Giants need to do something at quarterback. 
not just for the short term, but potentially for the long term. And if we're thinking long term, we've got to be thinking draft, obviously. So do the Giants draft a quarterback at number six? Or do they wait till day two and maybe look at the second round to take their quarterback? This is a very deep quarterback class. And an argument for taking a quarterback at number six is you may not be in this position again next year. You might not have as good of a draft choice. But you're also in a weird spot in that, you know, the top quarterbacks should be off the board by the time you go on the clock. So short of trading up, which I don't see the Giants doing in round one, I would be stunned if they do that. Um, you may not get the guy you want. Now, I don't know right now who the guy the Giants might be looking at. If there is a guy that they want, I've got to imagine there is. But these are the three quarterbacks that I think might make the most sense for the Giants and who could be available without the Giants having to trade up to get them. I'm going to start off with Drake May of North Carolina. Now, initially with Drake May, he was part of the big three with Jane Daniels of, of uh, LSU and Caleb Williams of USC. There have been, you know, analysts of late who have been saying that Drake May's stock may slide. He may slide down the board. And if he does, if he falls down to the Giants at six, do they take him? I don't know about that. I mean, if it comes down to Drake May or, or getting a premium wide receiver, I might say get a receiver at that spot and then get the quarterback in the second round. That's how I would do it. That's how I did my mock draft from the other day that's on Giants country. That's how I would look. Now, if Jaden Daniels, who's also on my list, fell down to number six, that would make me move to get him. I would also consider maybe trading up for Jaden Daniels. You know, if let's say, for example, um, Jaden Daniels makes it down to the Patriots spot and the Patriots are believed to be looking to get a quarterback, a veteran quarterback to jumpstart their efforts. I'd see if maybe I could swing a trade with the, the Patriots, who I think have the third pick in the draft. Might not cost as much to move up as it would if, um, you know, they were trying to trade up to number one overall with the Bears. That's the only quarterback I would consider trading. And by the way, I, it's nothing against Caleb Williams, but I don't think Caleb Williams is, is even going to get out. I think Caleb Williams, put it this way, is going to be the first quarterback off the board. And if the Bears are moving on, from um, from Justin Fields, as has been reported, then I think the Bears go with Caleb Williams. So my three quarterbacks, like I said, Drake May, I think if he falls, Jane Daniels, who, you know, I would I would trade up um, if it was, you know, if it was assuming that I didn't have to give up a huge King's ransom on me, even if the Giants had to trade up one spot to keep a, a team from behind them, like, Denver or another team needing a quarterback from jumping ahead of them, I would consider doing that. And then on day two, a guy that I seem to have focused in on, Michigan's J.J. McCarthy. Now, he's a guy that I picked um, in my mock draft. And, you know, J.J. McCarthy has got a good but not great arm. He can make all your throws that you need him to. He holds up well under pressure, and he processes quickly. All things that really, you know, we haven't seen from Daniel Jones. So I would take a flyer on him in the second round um, if he's there. Uh, the more I study J.J. McCarthy, the more I'm, I'm intrigued. Now, obviously, I'm going to do more work on the quarterbacks, but that's somebody who, you know, just keeps coming up. And I keep saying, hmm, I wonder if he would be a fit for the Giants. So here's the bottom line, folks. Whoever the Giants do take in the draft. And again, I would be shocked if they do not draft a quarterback. I would be disappointed if they do not draft a quarterback. I think they should do it. You know, if they don't, I, I, I won't be able to explain why I'll be honest with you, but what I think is going to play out for the giants at the position, Daniel Jones is going to be the placeholder. All right. So if he is healthy the expectation, again, there's that key word, expectation, is that he starts. Meanwhile, that gives whoever the rookie is some time to develop, some time to get some seasoning and adjust to the pro game. 
All right. Now, if Daniel Jones isn't ready, you just plug the veteran backup in there. Still allows the rookie to get ready. Now, let's say mid-year, the Giants decide to make the switch to the rookie because Daniel Jones has gotten hurt or just isn't performing or whatever the reason. Come next year, after the 2024 season, you can look to either cut Jones or, who knows, you might be able to trade him to a team that needs a quarterback because the 2025 draft class in quarterbacks, according to uh, some early analysis, is not set to be as deep as this year's class. So it might be more of a seller's market next year if, you know, that's how it pans out. So, you know, again, bottom line, folks, the Giants quarterback room is going to have a very, very different look this year. And I didn't even mention DeVito really, you know, and where he might fit in on all this. But I'll just quickly mention him here. I think, you know, DeVito last year earned an opportunity to compete for a roster spot. So, you know, in my opinion, no, no one on the quarterbacks group should be handed a job, but it looks like Daniel Jones will be handed back the job once he's healthy. I would have them all compete, to be honest with you, but that's not going to be the case. It looks like. So assuming that Daniel Jones is your starter, once he's healthy, you figure DeVito and the still to be determined veteran that they bring in will probably compete for the second, you know, the QB two spot. And then you'll have the rookie who will be obviously QB three. Now here's the interesting dilemma. The giants really don't keep three quarterbacks on the roster. They may have to, to start the season next year. If Jones is not ready. And even if he is ready, they still may have to, especially if that quarterback, uh, you know, the, the QB three is a high draft pick. You don't want to run the risk of stashing him on the practice squad and somebody poaching him, because that would just be an absolute waste of a premium draft pick. So all that said, if DeVito doesn't beat out the veteran that is thought to be brought in, DeVito could be the odd man out, or he could land up on the practice squad. Who knows? So it's just kind of weird how this all kind of works out, if you think about it. But the Giants quarterback situation, you know, from how we got to, to this point to where it's going, Boy, is it going to be interesting to see how it unfolds. So we'll bring it all your way, obviously, as we get details and transactions and whatnot. So until then, that's going to do it for this edition of the Loth on Giants podcast. Keep it here all week. We're going to do other position groups. We're going to go through all the position groups and similar format. I'll give you names for free agency. I'll give you names from the draft, what I think is going to happen, how we got to the situation and so forth. Hope you will check it all out. Again, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day. I'm Patricia Trainer, and I'll see you tomorrow, Giant fans.